Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We are built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. The very first time I went to West Virginia to ride Hatfield McCoy trails, the trail I rode was Buffalo Mountain. The town I visited was Matewan. So this trip this year, kind of a throwback for me because that's where we're headed. We're gonna head to the Buffalo Mountain Trail System and we're gonna tour around the new Devil Ants Trail System and head to the town of Matewan to get some history. So it's pretty neat that I get to kind of go full circle. I've done all the trail systems now and now I'm back where I started. For this trip, we're staying in the town of Williamson. And I gotta say, traveling from Ontario, Canada to Williamson, West Virginia is actually kind of a nice trip because literally the entire trip from beginning to the very end is on major highways, four lane highways and interstates. There are no back roads. For this trip, I brought along somebody who'd never traveled with us before. It's actually my uncle. He and I ride uh, mountain bikes together all the time. We hang out like two or three days a week. <laughs> Yeah, when Luke called me and he offered a trip for me to go down to West Virginia with him, I thought, what an opportunity. This would be pretty sweet. I've been to West Virginia a couple times, motorcycle trips more or less. For this trip, we're staying at a place called Sport Outfitter Cabins that's right outside the town of Williamson. The most impressive thing is the cabins themselves. I mean, this one is definitely right at the top. The Sport Outfitter Cabins are gorgeous, and it was a great place to end a drive and start a trip. Is very nice. I guess that's the first one up. Got the coffee going, went out and sat on the porch with the, the fog in the background and in the mountains. And yeah, it's just so peaceful and nice relaxing way to get the day going. Fog had set in so thick, typical West Virginia weather, and it would all burn off by the time uh, the morning rolled around. But it was fun to watch Rick kind of see this and, and experience it firsthand, something he'd never seen. Obviously all Hatfield McCoy trails are amazing, but one of the big reasons that you'd wanna come here and ride from Williamson is that the trailhead is three miles outside the town. It, you don't have to go far into the backcountry to find the, the trailhead. You can ride from almost every place of accommodation in the area. You can ride right to the trailhead. So it's pretty neat to be able to just wake up in the morning and take a five minute drive and then be unloading at the start of the trail. We met up with Jeff and Peyton, that's the father and son who own Sport Outfitters. And then we also met up with Wes. Never met Wes before, but he is awesome. He is, works at the Chamber in the town of Williamson. So these were the guys who were gonna guide us around and hang out with us for the trip. Well, the, the reason we're here today, we work really, really closely with the Hatfield McCoy Trails. I came into this position about a year and a half ago, and I told folks when I got the job, I said, trail tourism, adventure tourism, that's a huge thing for our area. That's our biggest thing we've got going right now, and, and we aren't even touching this much of it. There's so much opportunity between riding, and you, know, you all have experienced it with us, riding all these different trails. Um, folks are coming from all over the world, not just the country, to, to ride our trails that are right here in our backyard. Well, when we first got onto the trails, we headed out. You now you start going uphill and you think, okay, this is pretty cool. And then it gets steeper. You think, well, this is really awesome. And then it gets even steeper again. <laughs> and, and it's just, yeah, it's sort of like your heart goes from, say, 60 beats a minute up to like 120 beats a minute. And just because it's so exciting. So we brought along with us two. Maverick X3s. One of them is a non-R model XMR, so it's 120 horsepower, but with all the XMR goodies. The other one is a full R model XRC, which we've tested before, and perfect vehicles for riding in West Virginia, no question. As always, the trails at Hatfield McCoy on the Buffalo Mountain System are impeccable, perfectly maintained. One big issue we did have, though, was dust. Dust is unavoidable. I mean, you can't buy weather, so we lived through it. So in terms of, of highlighting and what we've seen, what we're doing, uh, the neat thing is the last time you guys were here, so much has changed. You know, 10 to 15 years, Buffalo Mountain went from being connected to three towns to two other systems now being connected to five, essentially from Williamson, Delbart, Mate One, Gilbert and Mann. You can ride probably close to 500 miles of trail. Every time they release a map, it seems like that little number at the top continues to increase. Uh, even though it says, I think, 300 right now, it's, it's probably closer to 500. It, it's a thing of showcasing our history 
Uh, the Buffalo Mountain system is very historic, as is the Devil Ants that's just, you know, came into being in the last few years. But it's not just the Hat from McCoy feud, but the, you know, the mine wars, various other small historical events that took place, all within about a 20 square mile or 20 mile radius, I should say. All these things happen here, and, and people, the neat thing, if you come here to ride, you're getting experience not only first class trails, you're, you're experiencing first class history, notable major events in American history. The marriage of those things together is really cool. Our lunch stop was in the town of Williamson, and one of the cool things is that you can pretty much ride in almost any town in West Virginia, right down the main street, right into the downtown core of a small city, right on city streets, stopping at stoplights, and pull up in front of a restaurant with your whole crew. That's a cool feeling. No matter how many times I do it, it's always a cool feeling. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. The first part of our trip took us from the trailhead at Buffalo Mountain all the way into the town of Williamson for lunch at a place called 348. And one of the things about West Virginia that has improved drastically is the food. Yeah, the food at uh, 348 was delicious. Big helpings, certainly not what I expected. After lunch, uh, we had a bit of a trek ahead of us. Our goal for this ride was to get to the town of Matewan, which was the goal for the first time I ever came here as well, and I think that's super cool. Uh, I hadn't been to Matewan since my very first trip almost 13 years ago. Back in the old days, let's call them, you traveled the Buffalo Mountain System, and then there was a trail connector that took you into Matewan, or a town connector, I guess. Now, though, an entire trail system has been developed outside of the town of Matewan called the Devil Ants Trail System, and it connects directly with Buffalo Mountain, and that's basically the route we took all the way through Buffalo Mountain to the Devil Ants Trail connector, onto the Devil Ants Trails, then into the town of Matewan. And as usual, the trails on both systems were impeccable. The trail connector was a great ride. We had to put on a lot of miles to get there, but they went by super fast because the trails are so good. As we're headed towards Matewan, really twisty, really fast. It was just a lot of fun. Well, at one point, Luke told me to look down over the edge and see how high up we were. As concentrating too much on just driving, trying to stay on the trail, but I did. And you know, we're like a thousand feet up and it's like, kind of gets your heart going. Buffalo Mountain and, and Devil Ants are, are perfect for any level skill rider. There's a little bit for everybody. There's a lot of green trail, like where we're at right now. It's easy to get here. Some people look at the maps and go, man, I, I don't know if we can get there. Tons of places you can go, whether you're on a little Pee Wee 50 dirt bike, all the way up to some of these, you know, side by sides that are, that are high end. And we talk about diversity in terms of what's the terrain but the diversity in the difficulty is really cool too. It's a very safe system and a neat place to ride. The last section of the trail coming into Mate One is a really neat section of trail because it's actually an old highway. It's all overgrown. It looks apocalyptic, like something out of The Walking Dead, but it's part of the old highway that used to take you in and out of Mate One. Then we connected to the official car road, let's call it, and took that all the way into the town. The plan for Mate One was to have an early dinner and then do a couple museum tours that are new museums in the town of Mate One. And, and I love history, I love West Virginia history, so I was pumped about that. But because we did still have a long ride home after that, we needed to have an early dinner. So we stopped at a place right on Main Street. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. The place we stopped at for dinner was right on Main Street, Matewan, and it was called Wingo's. You're in Mingo County, and I think that's where the name Wingo's came from. It's kind of a play, but cool old shop. They're normally closed during the week, but they opened up just for us during the week, which was great of them, and the food was spectacular. But then the highlight of Matewan was definitely gonna be going to the museums and learning about all the incredible things that shaped American history that happened in the little town of Matewan. You would never believe it, but it's an important piece of American history number of things happen. The first big one is called the Matewan Massacre, and it's where miners and corporate mine officials or enforcers, I guess you could call them, had a shootout. The total number was 10 or 12 people died, and it happened right on Main Street, and the bullets, not the bullet holes, but the actual bullets that were fired are still in the, in the wall. There's a little plaque there, and where are you gonna go to get that close to history? And the museum had all of that information in it and described that whole situation. But then I guess the big one that it talked about, the one that was basically spurred on by the massacre was called the Battle of Blair Mountain. And that's where 
anywhere from 10 to 13,000 miners grouped together. They were wanting to form a union and the mining companies didn't want that. So the miners grouped together and they basically marched on the mining companies, so to speak. And the mining companies fought back and the government got involved. And it was one of the first times in American history where the government actually fired on their own people. What you learn in the museum is just how awful the conditions were for these poor miners and their families and how awful they were treated by the mining companies. It shaped the state of American union unionization at the time. If you're in this area, you gotta go there and just learn about the area because you'll never believe how much important stuff happened right here. These guys were so bold and so passionate about, you know, freedom and doing what was right but the, the corporations were so ruthless against them. It's, it's terribly sad, really. These guys were bad dudes. They were not good people. <laughs> their, their legacy is not a good one. <laughs> not one you want to take home. No, no. The next uh, museum we went to is called The Depot, and it's a replica of the original train station that was in Mate One. It has a whole bunch of history in it, everything from just general history about mining to little bits and pieces about the massacre and the mining wars. But the big kind of focus of that one is information about, of course, the Hatfield-McCoy feud. And as I said before, there's a lot of history that happened in the town of Mate One, and a lot of the Hatfield-McCoy feuding, a lot of the big events within the Hatfield-McCoy feud took place in Mate One as well. This was, in particular, just a really neat historical piece that you could go and touch and feel and watch. It was really, really fun. After we were done at the depot, the museum, we, our guide, Wes, said there was a great lookout we had to go see, and we got back on the trail, and it seemed like we just kept going up and up and up and <laughs> never ended. Well, why and how has Hatfield McCoy Trails changed West Virginia in, in, in terms of the coal industry? You know, things we've seen it decline. The coal industry's decline. It's not always going to be here, unfortunately. Um, but as we diversify what we do, this adventure tourism thing's a no-brainer. It makes all kinds of sense. Folks are bringing in these machines that are, you know, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 machines. They're coming here to have a, have a blast. We want them here, and, and we appreciate them coming here. Um, lots of times, uh, people will go different places and, and not feel welcome. And I think one of our most powerful, powerful things we have is our own people. We have some of the friendliest, most welcoming. We were talking about the other night at dinner, you guys have sat down in people's homes uh, and feel like you're part of the family. And we want people to feel that way when they come here. We want them to feel like they're family. And I think it's one of our strong suits and strong points is treating people like they're one of our own well. And through the Hatfield McCoy trails, through adventure tourism, that's something that's really bringing us all together. I really wanted Rick to see the spectacular views you can get from the mountaintops here in West Virginia on the Hatfield McCoy trails. And we headed up to one of the, the highest peaks in the area. Yeah, when we got up top, the view was gorgeous. You just see for miles and miles. And it was really fun watching his face as he came around the corner and, and looked out over the view to see what, what you can really experience here at Hatfield McCoy. Whenever I come to West Virginia, I like to try and plan some, let's call it an extracurricular activity, something outside of riding side-by-sides or ATVs that we can do in the area. We work with Scott to provide goggles for dirt tracks and our snowmobile show, Snow Tracks. And Scott makes mountain bikes. I have one, it's what I ride myself. Scott also makes e-bikes, e-mountain bikes, like really good ones. And I'd never ridden an e-bike before, so I thought, wouldn't it be cool to go to the mountains of West Virginia and bring a Scott e-bike and compare it with a Scott non-e-bike? So when I had the opportunity, I took the E mountain bike first. I got to, to the top of where we had to go and I was barely breaking a sweat. It was pretty nice. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, well, there's a real reason why an e-bike would be useful here because the two of us switching back and forth was that you simply can go further. If there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that every time you come to West Virginia to ride Hatfield McCoy trails, you're gonna leave with memories that'll last a lifetime, especially if you come with friends. And this trip is absolutely one of those trips for me. Um, Rick and I had a blast. We had great accommodations, thanks to Jeff and Sport Outfitters. Um, the crew at Hatfield McCoy, Chris and his whole crew took care of us extremely well. Wes from the Williamson Chamber of Commerce treated us so good and had so much information. He was a wealth of information. I mean, just everybody who was there made this an absolutely amazing trip. But the reality is the trip we did is one you can do. It's one anyone can do. We didn't get any special treatment that was something no one else can do. So I encourage anyone who wants to have a trip of a lifetime, anyone who wants to make memories that will last a lifetime, come down to Williamson, ride Buffalo Mountain, ride Devil Lance, check out Mate One, check out the museums, grab some amazing food, go visit Devil Lance's grave if you have time, and 
make memories, man. That's what ATVing is all about. And my overall feeling of the whole trip to West Virginia, riding side by sides, riding mountain bikes with Luke, was probably right up there with my top experiences in my lifetime. It was, no, certainly do it again. If the opportunity ever arose, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't have passed it up for anything. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. There's no question, huge horsepower turbocharged side-by-side -side models get the majority of the media and the public attention. This isn't a conspiracy. They're just more exciting to talk about. But the reality is they do not represent the largest segment of the market in terms of sales. That honor belongs to the 60 to 64 inch wide sport side-by-sides. Last season, Can-Am revamped their Maverick Trail and Maverick Sport models and gave consumers a long list of things they've been asking for. This season, though, they took the Sport one step further with the introduction of X package models, including the XRC, XMR, and XXC, which is what we're testing today. So what makes these new X models, in our case specifically the XXC, more impressive than the non-X models? The truth is the list is pretty long. First and foremost, in my opinion, is the suspension. All X models get a four inch increase in overall width to 64 inches. Along with the extra width comes an increase in wheel travel from around 12 inches to an impressive 14.75 inches. And ground clearance gets bumped up to a whopping 15 inches. So right off the bat, the XXC is wider, has longer legs and has more clearance. This stuff alone would be enough to get most people excited, but the list is nowhere near done. Continuing on with the suspension, the front and rear lower arms are aggressively arched to increase the scope of that 15 inches of clearance. Front upper arms are beefed up as well. A full set of Fox Podium 2.5 QS3s handles all 14.75 inches of travel without breaking a sweat. Is the XXC more stable in the corners? Definitely, especially when things get extra fast or extra sideways. Does it ride better than the 60 inch Sport? It does, but not a lot. I found the stock shock setup to be on the stiff side on the small stuff. The travel does feel much deeper though, allowing you to push things much harder before you have to worry about bottoming out. All X package models are available only with the 100 horsepower 1000R power plant. And I need to just stop right here and say that this power plant is nothing short of impressive. It revs incredibly fast and thanks to absolutely perfect clutching, back shifts even faster. The engine just wants to rev so hard whenever you stab the pedal to the floor. For only having 100 horsepower, this engine performs like it has a lot more. Last season, only the Sport DPS model got multiple drive modes. This season though, all X package models come standard with this feature. When it comes to drive-by-wire throttles though, Can-Am doesn't have the best track record. But that has all changed with the Maverick Sport. The throttle response is instant and there's no hesitation or lag. Throttle tip-in is pleasantly mellow in both eco and sport modes. Speaking of modes, the other huge upgrade you get when you move to an X package sport is Can-Am's high-tech smart lock front differential. Tuned differently for each X model, the smart lock system has four separate modes selected by two dash mounted switches. On the XXC, you have two x four, four x four trail, 4x4 Trail Active, and 4x4 Diff Lock. This system has proven itself on the full-size X3 models and works every bit as well here on the Sport X model. While the suspension and the Smart Lock Diff really are the most impressive and important upgrades you get when you move from a Sport DPS to a Sport X package, the XXC package includes a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Beadlock wheels wrapped in 29-inch Bighorn 2.0 tires, rear sport bumper, mud guards, signature X3-style accent lighting above the headlights, and the seats are premium cut-and-sew units. Finally, the XXC package includes Can-Am's new 7.6-inch LCD gauge and dash-mounted D-pad-style controller. The gauge is mounted in front of the steering wheel and is easy to read through the spokes. Trip functions and drive modes are all controlled through the D-pad. The interior of the XXC Sport is the same as the standard Sport models in terms of layout and design. There's lots of room. The awesome three-quarter doors are sealed and watertight, don't rattle, have automotive quality latches and provide an extra 2.5 inches of shoulder space on either side. A huge passenger side storage bin mounted up in the dash, as well as a much smaller one mounted in front of the driver, provide more space for your stuff than I think any other Sport side-by-side -side I've ever tested. If I had to pick on one interior feature of the XXC Sport, it would be the passenger side grab handle. It feels good, looks great, and is sturdy, but it's not adjustable. That seems like a pretty major oversight to me. 
When you sit down to do your homework on the Maverick Sport XXC, you're likely gonna end up scratching your head just like I did. It has specifications that aren't exactly on par with any of its competition. Its closest competition would be Honda's Talon X, which is 64 wide with similar dimensions and travel numbers, but the Talon has five more horsepower. The Razor XP1000 is also 64 inches wide with similar dimensions and travel numbers, but the Razor has 10 more horsepower. Polaris's Razor 1000 makes 100 horsepower, but it's only 60 inches wide. This isn't to say that its performance isn't on par with its competition. It definitely is. I just think it's strange to see Can-Am release a new model that doesn't outpower everybody else. While the big horsepower turbo models will likely continue to get the majority of the attention from the media and from the public, it's nice to see Can-Am putting some serious effort into building a 64 wide machine that gives the rest of us all the comfort, performance, and features we've been asking for. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Hercules Tire, ride in our strength. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks TV. If you enjoyed this video, there's three things you need to do right now. First, like the video. Second, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And third, turn the bell on so you'll be notified of future uploads. But the most important thing all ATVers should be doing is getting out and going for a ride. So make sure you do that first.